Okay, I think I'm live, trying some different stuff again. Well, different, not really that different, about the same as last time, but different than the last whole mess of times. Essentially, I'm broadcasting to Facebook and YouTube at the same time, uh, doing this so that way the podcast can live on YouTube and that way I don't have to go and actually put it there, which is a lot of work that I don't want to do. So this does it for me. And for those of the listeners that actually watch on YouTube or ever wanted to or whatever, there's a there's another way to consume the content. <sighs> so it looks like it's not actually live on YouTube yet. It's sending the data, but it looks like I think I'm live on Facebook I'm using like this third party thing to do that. Uh, let me just double check here. One more thing before I get into the show. Take a sip of my scotch. Uh, for those that are watching, let me go ahead and do one thing here. Hmm. So there's a bit of buzzing I'm hearing. I'm not sure how to fix the buzzing sound. Hmm. Just want to go ahead and post this here. What's up, Wade? What's going on? Top fan. Look at that. I'm going to post this link here in the comment section. Uh, if you notice on the upper left-hand corner, you get 15% off from the Common Hunter website. So I put their website in there if you want any hunting gear. Um, they have some really interesting products at super great prices. So 15% off from them is like practically a steal and they're just a good group of guys dave de is the guy that runs that uh, along with the partner of his but i know dave not the other guy as well so any in any event wanted to try that out for those guys if you're over there and you put in the code where number two in the word hunt it'll get you 15 percent off so for those of you watching cool and then when this is consumed in podcast land you can still use that uh then too jose what's up from central iowa what's going on thanks for tuning into the show so on today's show, I don't have a guest with me. It's just me. So <laughs> it's going to get pretty boring if we don't have some callers. So anybody that's starting to tune into the show, I encourage you and politely ask uh, if you could start a watch party because there's not a lot of good ways to get this out to people. Uh, if you can do that, it helps a whole bunch. And then we'll get some callers. The number's on the screen, 262-757-4122. I'll see you come through my call queue. We'll bring you into the show and we'll talk. Um, today's topic is going to be about traditional archery. And so it's, it's funny to me because I am not a subject matter expert. First of all, even in hunting, even though I think this is episode 78 of the where to hunt podcast. Um, I never position myself to be one in that sense. I always do this to learn. And I realize that I know virtually nothing about traditional archery. Um, whether that's for, you know, competitive purposes an archery in its true form, or if it's for hunting, zero. I know nothing. So I wanted to take this opportunity to reach out to the audience of the hundreds of listeners that this podcast gets on a weekly basis, um, and then thousands through you know the live streaming kind of stuff, and see if people want to call in and share their experiences, questions. If you've never done it and you want to it might be another way to to learn too and we could talk about it together so that's kind of the purpose or the point of of today's show um <laughs> thanks thanks hal that's that's my top fan there my wife uh number one fan and logan yeah so i've always wanted to get into it not i guess i should back way up so i do have a story i'm going to tell in that context and it's not a great story i'm a pretty bad storyteller that's why I like when other people call in and tell me their stories but essentially i remember being a kid and i think i was probably uh i would have been eight nine or ten somewhere in that range maybe even a little bit younger um and i i remember seeing you know my dad had uh, a recurve bow and it was hanging in the garage. He had a couple of them. They're just kind of hanging up there. Like you'd see fishing rods in the garage. He had a bunch of traditional bows. Um, you know, back then, you know, I was born in 86. So, you know, back then compound bows were around. They, they were expensive. I assume, um, you know, I had no concept of money back then, but, um, you know, so he had a whole bunch of these things. And 
I remember when I got a little bit older, so it must have been 10, I think it was 10, 9 or 10, somewhere right in there. I said, you know, I was, I was just kind of bored, and it was a Saturday, and I wanted something to do, and so I had him take it down and string it up for me and set up a target in the back, and I shot for, like, hours and hours and hours until my arm was, like, super, super tired, and I remember specifically the the intrinsic reward and value of that experience of, like, eyeing something up and, and shooting off of instinct and out of instinct. And back then, like I didn't, I had never shot a compound bow. In fact, they kind of freaked me out because they were so big and heavy and clunky. And as a little kid, you couldn't pull that back past the, you know, the, I don't know the technical term, but whatever. I couldn't get it past that, that, that pot, that spot where suddenly you get to rest. And so I just remember like that got addicted almost immediately. And that's all I wanted to do. You know, it was either that or cast, you know, in practice casting in the backyard with some washers tied to my to my line on my pole, it, you know, it was one of those two things really that it's like what I saw my childhood doing that and building forts and starting bonfires in the woods that I probably should have been doing. But so it's that feeling that's never went away. And, and that's a bit of what drives, I think, hunting in general, that like addictive feeling of wanting to conquer something and, and feeling in, like you're in such a a state of like tranquility or peace or you know i don't know what to call it um it's it's definitely a bit of therapy so you know short of just shooting one of those bows i think you know getting ready to like aim one of those at an animal is a whole different story because of the the instinctive way to sight that in you're not you don't have a sight pin that's dialed in at you know 20 40 and 60 yards and you're you're at that point you're pretty damn confident you're going to hit the target and the boat the arrow's going to fly really fast um so that's, we're not out of breath here. I guess that's the driver of today's episode. So, you know, there's a few things that I started to kind of look into as a novice on Google, just type in some, some stuff in like wh- where to start. Um, and, you know, thinking back to that bow as a kid, I remember, you know, I'm, I'm positive that that was indeed a recurve. Um, but there's also, you know, a long bow, and then there's what I understand to be a hybrid of those two. And so understanding some of those differences, these are things that I just simply don't actually really know. Um, you know, what are the, I think the long bow is the oldest form of a bow that exists um, for hunters, short of a, being a stick and string, you know, from caveman times or whatever, prehistoric times. But what are the advantages? And obviously from going from a compound to a to a traditional bow i don't want to say it's going backwards but it's it's getting you're connecting closer to your roots um as as a hunter and so you're you're gonna be right relying on going off of instinct which is so much different so much different than shooting a compound bow um you know i guess before i continue on a whole lot longer here i'd be really curious so i do have the comment section up so i can get those you know is there anybody that's shooting um a traditional bow currently that they can they can comment about or or do we we have a lot of um compound bow hunters in the in the group right now there's only like three people watching <laughs> big audience guys and gals big audience 10 minutes in maybe i'll start a watch party i used to, be able to share this stuff to a to a group and i can't anymore so i'm not sure why facebook took that away from me as something that I could do to, to drive some audience here, but it is no longer a thing that I can do, which is really, maybe I can. I don't know, group name, I gotta search for him. Let's try one. Sorry, I'm silent, I'm typing some stuff up here. Yeah, no, it's very, very limited. It won't let me do anything with that. Fascinating. Guess I can share to my own group. <clears throat> okay, so the notes that I have here, deciding why to get into it. So I guess I, I try to answer the the why. You know, when I think about getting into anything, I want to ask myself, why am I doing this? Why do I want to do it? What you know, what's the purpose behind it? And for me, it's that connection. It's getting back to that feeling I had as a kid, and and getting kind of. I don't know, um, totally submersed into something without even thinking about it. And I like that feeling of 
of relying on instinct. So that's kind of the why that I want to, that I hope to get back to at some point. You know, I love shooting my compound and, and that's a great thing. I, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And I wouldn't ever stop doing that either. That's got its own thing, but getting in that rhythmic of just letting it fly and, and knowing that I had to aim to, to get it to hit that target. So that's kind of my why. Um, you know, I think part of it might be for some people the challenge. And so I talk a lot about the challenge of, of hunting, um, on public land really. And, um, crossbow hunter here. Oh man, you're going to get shunned clay for that. No, that's okay. I love the easy transition from rifle to bow. <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. Love it. Clay, start a watch party if you want, buddy. Um, anyway, yeah, I didn't even consider the crossbow. I mean, that's about as close to shooting a rifle as, as shooting a rifle, right? Nothing wrong with that either. I got no qualms with it. It's, it's whatever you're into. Totally derailed whatever I was just talking about, the challenge. So I talk about the challenge of hunting public property, and I think that there's a bit more of a challenge in hunting public land versus private. The challenges are different. I know there's challenges on private land, not knocking it, but the challenge of public land is your spot could be logged. Uh, it could be taken by someone else. You know, things change on public property all the time that are way outside of your control. And the less that's outside of your control, um, you know, the, the, the bigger the challenge is. So I personally love that. That's why I call myself the OKS hunter because I don't have big bucks on the wall or anything like that. I, I try really hard. So I have to really question why I'd want to go to traditional archery and make it even harder for myself because of the lack of success I've had so far shooting compound. But, you know, that, that I think is definitely a reason or a driver for some, the challenge of what it takes to shoot a traditional bow. Uh, I, I don't think it's easy at all. You know, we've watched Whitetail Adrenaline. Uh, Jared Scheffler was actually the first guest we had on episode one. If you care to listen to that one, it's a long one, good one. And and he shoots what I think is a longbow, and, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but, you know, for him, it really seems like it was the challenge, and I can't speak on his behalf, but that definitely seems to be what's kind of going on there. Um, you know, I, I think it's it adds a level of excitement there that's just different, and it I don't want to say it looks more quote unquote badass or anything like that, but just carrying one lightweight kind of quote unquote stick into the woods with you, it, it feels like you're a lot closer with nature. You're that much more like a ninja and more nimble and stealthy. And I, I love that. And so some of the stuff I was looking up too about, you know, if you're to get into traditional bow hunting, um, longbow versus recurve, for example, uh, it's said that the longbow is quieter than the recurve. So that's interesting. Not as fast though. So there's give and take. And I, and I, you know, for me, my bow that I have right now, I think it's the quietest bow that I've never heard. Um, compared to others on the market, it's a single cam. What is it? A bear empire. And it's super quiet for what it is, I think. And, um, it's not as fast as some of the other ones I've, I've shot against or up against with some buddies and things like that. Uh, but it's really quiet. And so for me, I actually would have to consider quietness over speed in some cases i think there's something to be said about that you're not even hearing an arrow uh, it doesn't matter how quick it is if they never hear it coming maybe so there's that and then i don't know the simplicity of it the simplicity like i talked about just bringing something so basic and plain jane into the forest makes you that much more stealthy and quiet and 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 just that's where i'm really stuck to in addition to that feeling i had as a child Additionally, the simplicity of just being so close to, to Mother Nature in that sense. Um, it's a different feeling, and I'd like to hear more from y'all about what you think about that, too. So, I don't know, getting back to the roots of hunting, you know, there's some people that are gung-ho about traditional archery, and, you know, they don't want to do any of the other new modern stuff, and whatever, right? Like, there's, there's even the compound guys that, that, that rag on people like Clayton, who just commented here that, well, you have a crossbow, and that that's a really funny argument and so like the people that are shooting traditional and longbow and recurve you know that they, they got a lot to to say that to that point I, I imagine i just don't care about that stuff and then there's different brands um and there's a few that i've noticed now i just when I think about getting into hunting, I've helped a few people, um, actually Clayton being one of them who's in the comment section here, get into hunting. And so my advice to any new hunter is don't spend a lot of money. 
you can get into hunting relatively inexpensively, you know, for a couple of the guys that I've got into it in the past, you know, it was probably before Facebook marketplace. And so Craigslist was really, I'm sure Craigslist is still very popular, but Facebook marketplace has, has done some things in any event, you know, you just browse Craigslist and you would get these great deals on a bow on camouflage on blaze orange. You could get, you know, um, used rifles from what used to be Gander Mountain. I think it's now Gander Outdoors, you know, Cabela's, things like that, Bass Pro Shops, etc. So before going down the path of what brand and blah, 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 it might just be interesting to, to do a web search, whether that's on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or some forums and, and things like that as to, you know, is anyone getting rid of these things? Um, I actually know a guy who, who built his own bow, his own recurve, and I can't actually even comprehend how badass that guy is. Like it, it blows my mind. I don't even know where you would begin. So that's a whole nother level. Um, certainly not going to build my own, but so we had Scott Clark on here commenting, found crossbow too easy, went to compound, found success. Uh, now I'm on to trad gear and, and burning tags. Nice. I shoot a longbow. I've shot a compound and a crossbow. So, Let's take a second, Scott. And if you, if, if anybody listening wants to call in, look, the lines are open. There's no one hanging out there right now. So I will gladly take a call and we can just have a, a real conversation right now. Um, the whole trad is, trad is just short for traditional, right? I just, because I don't do it, I'm not there yet uh, from a comfortability standpoint of saying trad. And, uh, you know, Scott, it sounds like you, you've been shooting a long bow and you've had some success in your, your, your burning day, so... Um, I'm just not sure. So I even doing Google searches that like trad led me to traditional, like, okay, I think, I think that's what's happening here. Um, I know there, there used to be a podcast called the, the trad cast, or maybe there still is. Uh, I reached out to a guy that, um, you know, had, had shot a lot of trad archery and, and he had moved on to some other things. Now I was hoping to get a, a guest lined up for this, this week's show and it just didn't, it just didn't come together. So that's fine. I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss doing a show. Uh, just because, because I couldn't get a guest, but that's interesting. So East coast bowling podcast, what up Gator, Gator outdoors in the house. I just started following Gator outdoors. That's awesome. Makes sense. That's why I'm seeing weight on here. And by the way, for anybody watching, I, I got this really great, uh, white tail drifter shirt on, um, from Connor Wakefield. It's a, actually, it's a great material. I just told my wife, I like, I love this material of shirt. Okay. I got to keep bouncing back and forth to show notes and comments, but I was talking about brands and I was talking about getting into the sport and how do you do that inexpensively. And so some of these big major brands in, in the archery world, like, um, Hoyt also create these traditional bows. Now the, the one I'm looking at right now is a Hoyt Satori. Um, it's at 850 bucks. You know, so I'm not trying to spend, well, I would love to spend 850 bucks. Don't get me wrong. I don't have $850 to spend on something like that. Um, it's a recurve system. It, it looks incredible. You know, it looks just like, it looks beautiful, right? It's not like all metal and this and that, but there, there's just a, a whole, there's some other brands I've never heard of. Um, Backtail Bows, Striker, Tomahawk. These are, these are brands I've not heard of in that sense. Um, nice. I got a, a message from, from D rock. He's going to, he's going to do, are you going to do a, a watch party D rock? Those watch parties, man, they work for everybody watching. Click that little watch party button and we can get some callers coming in, calling in. <laughs> so there's a lot of brands out there and I just don't know what, to look for. I'm, I'm really like, this is an episode of me not knowing virtually anything at all about a topic. You know, usually I know at least something or I have some experience in it. And the only experience I have from this is, you know, so long ago, I can, I can only remember the feeling that I had, but I don't remember anything else. Uh, I, I liked shooting without, I think I was just using my two fingers or I had some sort of like little release that was like, you know, you put your fingers in there and you can pull the, the string back. So it didn't hurt your fingers so much. You know, as a kid, as an adult, I don't know if I'd need that. You know, there's other equipment and gear that might go into this that I'm just simply unaware of. So trying to just do that research online can only take you so far. And I didn't get down the, the, the rabbit hole of YouTube videos yet, 
though that's a place where you can spend a, a, a shit ton of time. You know, YouTube's the second largest search engine in the world behind behind Google, and um, you know that stuff can be really addicting. Just gonna check the comments here real quick, make sure I'm not missing out on anybody. I know I was asking some questions of people here. No, well, it's like taking all my comments away. Person is something without nope, even thinking. Don't want to do it. that. Like Sorry, guys. Scott Clark, are you shoot? Are you shooting a? You said a longbow. Yeah. Found cross. Read that. Tried to short for traditional. Thank you for clarifying. That's what I thought. But you know, and I don't know something. I don't. I don't want to misspeak. Not super helpful. I just can't imagine what it feels like to actually get an animal with a longbow or a crossbow. You know, shooting off of your own instincts without a sight pin, like. It's hard enough to to try to shoot above like where you're where you want to be if you know you haven't adjusted your sight pin and something came in really quick and you want to aim high or whatever to, to compensate for you know the drop. Oh man, the the thrill of shooting that has got to just be insane, totally different, and the amount of practice that goes into it to get that comfortable and confident blows my mind for the people that have success with it but it's interesting because we've been doing it forever right it was it's been around a lot longer than any other method we've been shooting so the technology is wonderful in compound bows it's just it's just different if anyone has um a traditional bow whether it's recurve or, or longbow i'd and you live in wisconsin you ought to hit me up i'd love to come just see how it goes and how shitty it actually be it might make me reconsider the whole damn thing. I'm not sure. It, it probably won't. Money would, though, if my wife's still watching. She, she'd probably not be super thrilled about me spending $800 or something ridiculous like that. You know, I wonder how much... Uh, let's just try this here. So I have the ability to share different screens. Let's try... Um, let's try Craigslist. and see what we find. Recurve bow. Oh, so Cabela's has one for a hundred bucks. A PSE a Razorback. They have a um, Saberhawk for one hundred and fifty. There's that's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Bear Archery has one. Four hundred bucks. Yeah, but then you got to think about, like, I don't even know how much the arrows cost, right? Like, what does that look like? And where do you start with that? Let me uh, share this browser screen real quick. One second, everybody. Boom, here we go. I don't know how I got into that, but if I do recurve, oh, I just did a Craigslist thing here. We can do shopping. And then here we go. 56 bucks. 48 inch recurve, 20 pound. So there's draw length to consider. I've seen some content about like true or actual draw length, which is obviously different than compound. I just wonder what a good place to start is. Um, handmade recurve bow from Mongolian horse longbow. 50 pounds, 66 bucks. Seeing these pictures, man, makes me really want to get at this here. 79. So not terrible. I mean, like, definitely not, unless I'm going to that $800 one that I saw earlier. Like, this is not, like, compound or crossbow. Clayton, I'd be curious to know how much you spent on your, if you're still watching, if you come back in, I'd be curious how much you spent on your, on your, um, whatchamajigger. Curve. And there's all different ways and stances to shoot these things too. You see a lot of people kind of curving it, some people squatting like this guy. Yeah, traditional archery. 
on all videos two hours Who's this guy? On one of the many main veins that lead from the city out. We are now going west towards a little town called Irapraxa. This would be a town or an area. It's just. I don't know where this guy's going. Anything else. And that's all you have to do. I don't see him shooting anything. Here we go. You're, you don't get all this time either, man. You draw back, and that's kind of it. You draw back, and suddenly you're you're off to the races. Um, that's totally different. That's just totally different. I got like kind of a hum here in my ear. So it's an interesting topic. It's just a super interesting topic. I apologize that I'm not an expert, and I'm just asking all these questions out loud to an audience. Um, it's just super fascinating to me. And really, like, I want to hear more. I want to hear more from everybody. I'm surprised no one's calling in, guys and gals. 250. You'll be, you'll, you, wait, so East Coast, are, is anybody over there by you guys shooting traditional? Trad? Curious. Two fifty, right in there. Said I'm just reading comments right now. So East Coast Boning Podcast, Gap Shooting. <laughs> I mean, I could watch YouTube videos for the rest of the night now. Now that I'm talking about this. And do you, it, you know, I wonder about like what kind of bad habits you'd bring over shooting compound, um, in contrast to traditional. Like, would it be? Does that make it harder? Then if you were to get into it from the other way around, like if you start from traditional and then go to compound, you know, what is that transition actually like? And do you actually feel stealthier with it? Like I imagine one would. You just kind of feel like a badass. So East Coast Bow Hunting Podcast is commenting in the in the comment section here. Um, so when this is in podcast land, I'll, I'll read off the question so you all can hear it. But they say they have a trad shoot at um, Coos Cob Archery coming up that you're covering. So you're going to cover it. Rock on. Well, shit, this is – I should have done my live podcast when you, when you guys were doing that. And you and Trevor are shooting that way right now. Well, how did I miss out on that stuff, guys? I wish you lived in Wisconsin sometimes. You got to come back here for Deer Fest in the summer. We got one caller in the queue right now. They're getting screened, so I'll bring them on in a second. Processing audio. Who do we got? Maybe they didn't say their name. I'll bring them in anyways. Howdy, you're live on the Where to Hunt podcast. Who do we got? What's good, E Money? This is D Rock. D Rock, you watch you me suffer man? over here. No calls, no guest. <laughs> Bro, I had to do. It. I tried not to, to to have other people jump on, but it seems like they're shy tonight. Yeah, man, it's interesting. We'll see. We'll see if this catches steam at some damn point. It's like hit or miss, depending on the topic or the guest. Like I think the most calls I got in right. an hour were eight, which was awesome. I was like, oh my god! And then you need to get this happening every now and again. But it's not. It's not hunting season right now. It's turkey hunting season. And there's a lot of guys chasing birds, so you know maybe everyone's just kind of in the woods or something. Uh, maybe, maybe either that or they're scouting, seeing if they can roost some birds for tomorrow. Yeah. How you doing, brother? You were uh, at a brewery last night or something, huh? Yeah, yeah. We were at our sponsor's uh, 
brewery, Shabim Brewing in Woka, Connecticut, and we recorded live there, um, and like as a patronage thing for our listeners. And uh, it was a fun show. It was a fun show. The topic was new hunter recruitment, and we had the owner and the master brewer interviewing us uh, because they're aspiring bow hunters to be. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, so we, we figured we'd do a little twist on it and us get interviewed for once um, on our own show, that is. Yeah, okay, that's what was going on. I saw some of the live stuff going on, but I couldn't really hear some of it on, like, Instagram or whatever. But in any event, man, so you're shooting trad. I'm going to say trad now. I'm going to start to do it. It makes me feel weird. I just I don't cool. know why. Traditional. What? Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> is that what it is? The dark side? Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be, yeah. I mean, uh, you definitely have to, I find you have to shoot a lot more as far as uh, more arrows to get more precise and dialed in because there's many different methods that you could shoot, actually. Um, a lot of people go with the split finger. You could go three fingers under. You could go uh, gap shooting um, as, as well as, like, uh, fixed crawl. I mean, there's many different methods of shooting. It, it's really your preference. When did you start doing it, and how long have you been doing it? I started shooting bow at like 11, probably 10, 11 years old with a recurve. Um, I had a, a kind of beat-up recurve that I acquired at a tag sale, and then I upgraded when I was... 12, 13, and I still have the same bow. It's an old PSC recurve, 45-pound draw. And uh, that's what I always shot until I turned 16. Then, Or maybe eight, maybe I was turning 18, and I acquired a compound. And I still have that thing right now, too. Damn, dude. So my first compound was a, um, a Darton Viper dual cam. I think it was a freaking oh, nice. beast. It was just a Those beast of a bow. Yeah, yeah, those are really good bows. Um, but so, like, Can't buy bad bow now. No, no. Well, we started shooting traditional at the same age. The difference is you stuck with it, and I didn't, you know? Um, so that's interesting, man. That's super interesting that you've been doing it that long. And have you been putting deer down with one of those? I imagine you have. Um, actually, I, I don't know if you knew this about me. I The biggest game I ever hunted before was gator down in Louisiana. And I've only been hunting deer for the past two years. Uh, Zero so for the clue. past two years, yeah, the past two years I have uh, ten deer down so far. Time out though. Are you telling me you you shot traditional archery and hunted gators with a recurve? Uh, not with a recur- recurve. No. Oh my god! I, I was about, uh, to, I was was about the- to like start bowing down and hailing you. Like, what the fuck have I been missing? Nah, no. Nah. By all, by all means, I still have a lot to learn, man. It oh, yeah. feels like as soon as you grasp one concept, it, you uh, start learning another. It's never ending. Well, that's the other thing, too, with this, man. Like, So it, it's really something that, like I said, my wife's not going to be happy with me spending more money, and it sounds like I could I could get in for a pretty, pretty low cost. Like, That's not a big concern there. And time's obviously an issue for me, like you know, raising a family and stuff, but um, the, the, the constant thirst for learning new things this is something that i'm it makes me feel really excited to even think about it oh yeah it's definitely uh a nice new realm to venture in and you know what i want to take a quick pause i wish scott clark uh would chime in uh because he's got a lot more experience shooting uh traditional than i do right now and it'd be nice to pick his brain a bit so I hope he's still listening, and I hope he calls in because uh, he's definitely a wealth of knowledge as well, especially when it comes to, to traditional. So he's got playoff hockey tonight. I know, but all it takes <laughs> is like 10, 10, 15 minutes of his time max. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. My buddy Clay over <laughs> in Michigan is a big hockey guy. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not watching either, which is probably why he ain't calling either. But he also doesn't know anything about traditional archery so he probably would be the two of us going i don't know man i don't know you know do you know no i don't know and that would be us <laughs> <laughs> well i i hope i hope my buddy austin chandler chimes in soon too because uh i know he's just getting prepped because he's been planting all day uh but he should be calling in b- before the end of the show which would be nice to pick his brain as well 
Yeah, yeah. I'll stay live till about eight o'clock, and then I'll cut it. And you know, if I don't get any activity, I'll cut it sooner just to I don't bore people on here. But I don't know, man. It's it's super. Like, what do you do? Like, you have do you have a rifle and a shotgun, and you obviously have a compound, and then do you have you have your your traditional bow, right? Like your recurve. Yep, yeah. I have a crossbow too. Like, girls have shoes, and we have weapons, right? And we have to have Correct. one for every occasion. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, in that same retrospect, I uh, I guess I'm half girl because I have a collection of cowboy boots too. So yeah, I got a lot of shoes, man. I That's like my shoes. It's a weird thing I hear you on that. So tell, talk to me about like less about the equipment and the gear, and, and I know that there's a lot of practice that goes into it. But talk to me about um, when you make a decision to bring that in the woods versus your compound. Like, are you like this is do you do you do different types of hunts with the the recurve than you do with your compound or is it just like no man I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the recurve today that's what we're gonna rock. Um, most certainly, the best advice that I could give is if you feel confident enough to ethically take take a life, then that's when you decide to take the recurve in. Uh, me personally, I've been shooting it for quite some time. Um, but I recently, it was all ghettified too, the way, it, cause I was self-taught. I had a sight on it, a stabilizer, and I used to shoot split finger. Um, and I was very, very successful with it. And I usually hunted like smaller game, like r- rabbit and squirrel and stuff with it. Um, but recently I hooked up with my buddy, Bill Hall from the Hall family. And it's, a uh, their background are Olympic target shooters, Jeez. It's specializing in, in in traditional, and I hooked up with them recently because East Coast Boning Podcast is going to be covering a uh, trad shoot and swap meet at Cos Cobb Archery here in Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, or Cos Cobb, Connecticut. And um, I didn't want to show up with my advanced mods on a traditional bow, so he hooked me up, gave, gave me a couple pointers, and now I'm shooting a uh, fixed crawl which is basically three fingers, your index, middle, and ring finger, underneath the knock. And the way you aim is with the tip of the arrow. So you line up your bowstring and the tip of the arrow, and that's how you aim. And what you're moving, instead of gap shooting, gap shooting is, like you mentioned earlier, yeah, how you're, you're kind of guessing. Or something? Yeah. yeah, like higher or lower, depending on the distance, what have you. Um the the fixed crawl is basically you're repositioning your fingers underneath the arrow. So in other words, you knock your bow or your arrow to your bow. And for me specifically, the way I have my recurve tuned, when I have all three fingers and my index fingers touching the knock, that's money all day long for 35 yards for me. Dude. Now, if I go down maybe about an inch yeah, like about an inch, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, give or take. That's money for 22 yards for me. Mm-hmm. So you got to look at it that way. Hey, you your, boy, your boy Austin Chandler just called in. Do you want me to bring him on? Oh, cool, cool. I'll get off. I, yeah, sure? bring him. Oh, you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll get off. I want to I wanna hear what he has to say, right, and I'll chime good. in on the comment. Thank you. Thanks, Rock. Peace. Hey, Austin, you're live on the Where to Hunt podcast. Thanks for calling in. Hey, Eric. How's it going? It's going great. Hey, I've never talked to you before, or at least I don't think I have. So thanks for calling into the show, man. I really appreciate it. That's no problem. Uh, D-Rock just uh, shot me a message about a half hour ago and said I should call in. So I've been listening to you guys just for the last couple minutes. And, uh, yeah, much respect to you traditional guys. I'm just kind of starting to dip my toes into it, so I'm a rookie for sure. Well, I'm starting to start to dip my toes into it, and that's what this show is all about, is <laughs> a guy that knows literally nothing. What ought we to consider for those of us that, you know, even even should we be considering it, right? Like, why do we even want to get into it was the the way that I started to approach it. Um, but by all means... Well, why do we bow hunt journey. versus gun hunt, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, so you're trying to be... Like what? What drew what drew you into it? Where, how, you said you're pretty new to it, so let you. I'll let you kind of run with that for a second. Well, I've uh, I've had a recurve since I got into archery. That was back in 1997, and uh, just intrigued by the traditional side of it as well as the compound side. And uh, 
as I started to deer hunt and kind of started to get on big deer, I guess the recurve just kind of got stuck in the corner and the dust had gathered. And I just, in the last couple of years, I've really had to get the, get the itch and pull it out of the corner and start flinging some arrows with it. And that's kind of where it started. You're just like, you know what? Look oh, at this thing. I'm going uh, to grab this thing. I've and... had a recurve since I got it. Yeah. I was actually got to shoot a doe with it uh, way back. It was 97 or 98. And honestly, I think that's the last time I took it out. I, I put a bad shot on the doe and was just kind of like, you know, if I can't ethically do this the right way, you know, I owe it to the animal to be good with this thing. And I just never took the time to practice with it like I should. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of kind of in that mood so i might pick it up this summer and start in with it that's awesome so i guess are you are you practicing year round then or like kind of you know like i'm sure we're not all like cameron hayes we're shooting literally every single day but you know when you have time (laughs) is that kind of your is that your downtime like leisure time are you spending that shooting well i i try to uh honestly i get pretty lazy after deer season i hunt about every day during deer season in our month our deer season goes for about three months. So, uh, yeah, I, I practice through the season and then about the middle of January, I set the bow down for a few months and kind of take a break. And this is, this is about the time of year where I get fired up again and start chasing turkeys with it and pick it back up and go at it again. Yeah. That's super cool. Like, so do you have, um, you know, obviously with that setup, you're running a a quiver, right? Like I've just, I I'm, literally literally starting to scratch the proverbial surface of this whole thing um so tell me more about that i'm just gonna pick your brain because i have you so tell me more about the arrows you shoot the quiver the the style in which you shoot d-rock right before you uh called in we dropped him off and he was talking about the shooting methods or styles he talked about something called the gap which is something that i mentioned without knowing that i had mentioned it um and then he was talking about a different a different way just right as you had called in um you know how are you how are you doing that this this is how new I am to it. I literally have <laughs> I have no method. I pretty much just pull back and guess. So I'm uh, I'm probably more new to this recurve thing, traditional archery than than anybody. Um, yeah, I don't I haven't researched it enough to even have a method. I'll be so the next newest one. I uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm looking forward to tuning in and watching your progress and uh, seeing how it goes. Yeah, I'll document as much as I can, you know, to the to the me picking one out. And, you know, I did some screen sharing a little bit ago of just doing some Google searches of like shopping for them online. And, you know, it looks like the point of entry in terms of cost isn't terrible. And, like as low as 60 some bucks, you could probably at least get the bow. That doesn't count the arrows and any other equipment. But um, D-Rock just posted in the comments here. He wanted to ask you what kind of setup you have i don't know if you're able to answer that or not based on your experience yet yeah i've just got a it's a old bear grizzly is the name of it i bought it way back in the day i think it was like 140 bucks and uh honestly right now i just shoot whatever arrows i have left over from my from my compound nice. <laughs> just kind of got a pile of pile of junk arrows that i throw and yeah it's fun to shoot but and then for my quiver, I just got a, it's a cat quiver that I throw on my back. Cool. So I'll ask you one other question and then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Um, one of the things that I think is a draw for, for me is, I don't know, call it being a ninja or, or stealthy or whatever you want to call it. But do you feel different when you go into the woods with the recurve than something else like a compound or a rifle? It's yeah. I, I guess I could compare it to walking into uh walking into my tree stand with a compound in my hand during gun season it's just that added bit of challenge and you just i don't know you just feel like you're kind of set back away from everybody else doing your own thing and yeah i guess that's why i look forward to getting into it's just the added challenge so it really changes the perspective you know i know it's so hard because we're inundated with technology now and we all have smartphones right i don't think there's very few people left without them these days and the challenge of not bringing them into the woods with you now, like the message that I have with my wife is like, well, I have to have it because something happens. I have to be able to tell her that I'm you know, falling from a tree or whatever. Right. But then it right. sucks you in to other things like, well, I might as well check the, the weather or the wind or the forecast or 
um, you know, <laughs> Onyx and see Facebook, where I stand. Instagram, yeah, whatever. Man, all these things. And, and so I'm thinking if I, if I go down this traditional route, um, path or whatever you want to call it, suddenly I've, I've, I've kind of like put into this different gear in my mind where now I'm, I don't want to say hardcore, but, um, more in tune because now, now the hunt is even more intimate than just even a compound bow. And so suddenly now, like I'm going to have to do things even more differently and pay more attention and get more in tune with nature that I, I don't want to touch the phone. I, I think that that's where that's in my mind. It's going to take me. I don't know if that's something that you've experienced or if that hasn't changed, you know, based on rifle versus compound versus traditional. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to picking it up this fall. And like you say, it kind of brings you back. It brings me back to my roots. You know, when I first got into archery, it was uh, kind of pick up the compound and the recurve at the same time. And I've kind of lost touch with that. So I'm looking forward to, to picking up the recurve and getting getting back to my roots for sure. Super cool. If I, if you can, you, I can let you go, but I might ask one more question. I ask all my guests this. So um, since I have you, would you, do you, would you feel comfortable sharing your most memorable hunt? Oh man. Well, I had a recent hunt this fall and, uh, got to kill my biggest deer. Um, just a super quick story. I, I had like three years of history with this big, uh, non-typical double drop time deer. And, uh, after, after chasing him all archery season, I had, uh, Oh, what was it? Three or four encounters with a bow, got him within 70 yards, like three different times and just couldn't close the deal on him. And, uh, ended up getting him on the last day of uh, muzzleloader season. So that was, that was pretty gratifying. So yeah, that's the first memory that pops up into my head. It was just from last season. That's awesome. It was with the muzzleloader. You have to, if you, if you get around to it, um, welcome me to post a picture in the comment section of this, of this video so I can get eyes on it. But, uh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to try to get you one. Thank you. And what state are you hunting out of? I'm in Illinois, West I'm central Illinois. Illinois. Cool. Thanks for calling into the show. I really appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you having me. All right, Austin. Have a great day. Good luck this season. You too. Thanks. Yep, bye. bye. Super exciting. So it's interesting to hear, you know, people that have experience with traditional archery. It's clearly a lot harder. Um, but there is something to it that ignites the primal instincts that we have as hunters. And it's striking a chord. The more I, the more I let my mind kind of wander or should I say drift, uh, to it, you know, it's the reason I didn't do this show before now, a couple reasons, a lining up a guest, which isn't an excuse. I shouldn't say that it's not that difficult to get a guest. Um, but B, <laughs> More so that I knew that when I did this show, I will be not forcing myself, but basically forcing myself down this path of, of going to get one and do it. And in fact, my dad might even still have the same one I shot as a kid. So I might go bark up that tree first. Um, and we have the same super long, his arms are a little bit longer than mine. He's like a, an actual living Sasquatch. He'll laugh when he hears that. I think he might call me and tell me about it, but yeah, pretty long arms, and so does he. But our draw length, I think, is really similar or close. So that might be a good place to start, if any. But I like that Austin said, you know, it was laying in his garage there, and he kind of kept going past and eventually decided to pick it back up again. But additionally, that, you know, it's not something to take lightly in that it is harder, and so getting an ethical kill is even more difficult. So it is something to be taken very seriously, and, and, and practicing is a, is a big part of that and feeling confident. You heard D-Rock say earlier when he called in, you know, shooting a certain way with his fingers in a certain spot, he's dialed in at 35 yards all day um, by dropping his fingers an inch on the string. Um, you know, then he's then he's at 22 yards, and he could say that confidently. Um, that's good confidence to have, and that's where I think you know I would like to get. And so the the gap shooting that D Rock mentioned, where you're you're kind of aiming higher than where the arrow is going to go, or something to that effect. <sighs> I don't know if I would feel as comfortable as that knowing you could just pick your spots on the string, so to speak, um, and using the arrow kind of broadhead as your, as your tip and, and what, what to point at the target. 
Um, and then obviously everything is, everything is different when you have an actual animal coming your way and, and, or, and or in front of you. You're shooting at a target. It's very different. But the, the reactionary nature of the fact that you can't sit there and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it. And yeah, it's hard, but it's doable um, like you can with a compound. You got to be super confident in that shot and, and really quick. So like when I say instinctively shooting, um, I'm also saying there's a lot of gut that goes into that. In, in the moment, you're making snapshot decisions and, and judgments. And that is interesting because then you're not going to sit there and overthink something. You're going to go with it based on what you've practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. So really, I think the fun part ought to be like the muscle memory that goes into this. And you do it over and over and over and over again so many times that there's it takes the thinking kind of out of it. Um, that's what I mean by instinctive is that you're acting instinctively and you're not overthinking something like I'm overthinking the purchase of getting one of these things and getting into it, doing the show and talking about something I don't know about, don't know much about or anything about for that matter. I do know I'm pretty good at drinking scotch because I've had two glasses. So that's pretty yummy. But that being said, um, if there's no other callers, we got about nine minutes here before eight o'clock. I appreciate everyone that tuned in and uh, did a watch party and shared and liked and commented. Um, thank you so much. And again, if you're looking for any products this hunting season, whether it's for turkey or for um, you know deer, whatever you're into, elk, etc., cetera, um, head on over to commonhunter.com, type in the code where to hunt with the number two, and you're gonna get an extra 15% off. So uh, that's my little plug for the night. I get no kickback on that. It's just to help those guys out and, and for me to try something on, on the side. So thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to me ramble on and on and on and on about a topic I know very little about. And if you do have any additional information to send my way, I'd be happy to take some of that stuff. You can send me a, a message on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, not LinkedIn, Instagram or Facebook. You can send a message to me via um, Gmail. It's where the number two, the word hunt, wi at gmail.com. And you can also go to the where to hunt app.com website. Um, and you can send emails that way too. So again, thanks so much everybody for tuning in.